Okay, so what we need to do next is to reboot into the USB stick that we've burnt and actually start um, with the uh, LFS installation. So what I'm going to do, to, as you saw, I just rebooted and it rebooted by default into the Mac operating system. We've got to tell the, the Mac that we don't want to boot into the default operating system. We want to boot the USB stick. And to do that, we need to press the Alt or what is the Alt button on the PC keyboard, the Alt stroke option button on the Mac keyboard. And the time we press that is just after the chime has, has occurred, ideally just as as soon as you hear the chime, uh, to press and hold the Alt um, Option button at that time. And it's, it's roughly about the time that the um, backlight of the Mac uh, screen appears as well. You'll see the backlight turn on. So the screen will go from pitch black to a very, very dark grey when the light comes on. That That's about the time that you want to press and hold the button. If um, you don't, it doesn't. If you don't get the menu coming up with the uh, USB stick, showing the USB stick to uh, boot from, then you're either pressing the button too early or too late. If you press it just after the chime has finished, it's probably too late. And if you press it too soon as the chime appears. Um, it's definitely too early because I've done that a few times. Thinking, well, I've, I've pressed and hold, held it, and it's not, it's not booting. So, ideally, half, roughly halfway through the duration of the chime, is the time that you want to press the button, and and it is press and hold just to be sure that it's been registered as as the Mac boots. So I'm going to do that. Like I say, you won't see the icons that appear because the Thunderbolt won't have been activated at that time. But what you'll see appear is two icons come up with an arrow underneath the first icon. The first icon will be an image of a hard disk which indicates the operating system you can see now on the screen, the main operating system. The other icon is like a yellow gold coloured external hard disk drive, a kind of graphic like that. Um, and it will say something like EFI boot underneath it, I think it is. And what you need to do at that point is to press the right arrow and then press enter to select the alternative boot, which is the USB, um, the USB stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart again. And as soon as I hear the chime, I'm going to press and hold the Alt Option button. And hopefully that will come up then, those two icons. So there's the chime. I've just pressed the Alt button and held it. And I've got a blank screen at the moment. And now I've got the two icons come up. Um, you'll also get the Wi-Fi networks at, at the bottom as well. I th I'm not sure if that appears if you've already set up your Wi-Fi. I haven't, so it's appeared. Um, if you've already set up your Wi-Fi, that might appear with the Wi-Fi um, access point that you've already been using. So anyway, I've got the two um, icons, the arrows underneath the one saying MacOS with the hard disk image. I'm going to press the right hand arrow on the keyboard, the arrow on the screen is now pointing to the EFI boot icon, which is a yellow gold um, graphic of a an external hard disk with a little green light on it. And I'm going to press enter. And now I've got the Endeavor OS menu come up. And all I need to do is either wait for it to time out or just press enter to, to accept the default. And hopefully at some point during this boot process, the screen will activate and you won't be looking at a black screen anymore. So it's still black on the Mac at the moment. This is a USB 2 stick, so it's slightly slower than perhaps it could be if it was a USB 3. Right, yeah, there it is. The Thunderbolt port's been activated. And you can see the um, Endeavor OS Linux booting from the USB stick now. So this Endeavor OS has only just been updated within the last um, 
five days or so, I think it's four or five days. So this is also the latest available. Okay, so you can see the desktop, the graphical environment's loading. There's a little menu box that comes up, and when that comes up, then it's finished loading. Um, so we don't need anything here. So I'll just click that there. And what we need to do now is to get a terminal up. So just press this icon here. If you right click that terminal and click on preferences, um, it might be handy to select unlimited scroll back. And I'm also going to make the icons a little bit bigger, just to make it easy to read on the screen. So just click there, click there, and I'll make them um, 15, 16 maybe. Select, you can see the window is resized, and I'll just extend this down to the bottom there. So the first thing I'm going to do is to become the root user, so I've got access to everything. And now I'm going to run fdisk minus L to... Oops, to look at the state of the hard disk and yes unfortunately this GPT error has come up um, and that's probably the error that appeared when I resized the partitions in the Mac OS. Now interestingly if I run GDisk on this it doesn't report any errors um, so I'm not sure whether it's a genuine error or if it's just a warning more than an error um, and something that can be ignored and doesn't really affect anything or if it is something that indeed should be fixed but um, I've, I've not had any problems with it um, actually I've just thought there's one thing I could try which is gparted I'm not sure right I need another terminal to do that so I can run it as the user I'm not sure if this would identify any errors or not, so I'm just going to try it out. Um, there's nothing reported there. Normally you get, um, somewhere around here, you get little, uh, like, triangular warning signs saying there's something wrong. Uh, let's run checks on these. Okay, that's come up. Yeah, maybe, maybe there is some problems. It's not come up with there now. Um, I don't think the APFS is... No, we can't check or do anything with this apart from reformat it. Resize move. Um... But yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's not a definite error, but there's definitely something wrong with it. Um, so, what I'm going to do is just go with it and just hope it doesn't cause any major problems. Um, I've not found a way of fixing it. Um, the, the ways that I've seen suggested to fix it would involve possibly losing everything that's on the disk so I can't take that risk um, I do want to keep hold of the Apple OS for the time being in case there are any problems booting to Linux from scratch um, but maybe when the Linux from scratch is reformatted or resized and we get rid of the Apple partition maybe then that could be the point that this gets fixed but for now I'm just gonna ignore it um, everything does seem to be working fine, so that's the main thing. So let's go into um, the disk. I'm going to use FDisk because it's uh, a little bit simpler. You could use GDisk or indeed you could use GParted if you wanted to um, to do all what we're going to do here. So uh, again, normally if there's an error on the disk, with the format, it's not normally appears when you're inside FDisk, so it's interesting. It's not reporting it here as well. It's kind of yeah, it's a it's a bit funny why that's happened. So what I'm going to do here is delete the um, second partition, which is the one 
that we created was well, actually the third named partition. This is the one we created for Linux from scratch. So I'm going to delete partition three. And now all that's left is the partition um, for the Mac OS. And what I want to do now is to recreate the partition. New is the third one. I want to use the first available sector and the maximum amount of space. And you can see it's created a, a new partition, but this time it's given the designation of Linux file system. So if I print that up, you can see. Now, normally I would put in a swap partition. Um, oh, I suppose I could do it. I wasn't going to bother actually, but because it's not really necessary with eight gigabytes, but if you've got uh, maybe an older Mac with less memory, then um, you probably would need some swap. So let's do that. Let's delete partition three and I'm going to create a new partition. Partition number one, first sector. So you can see that the partition took up 232 gigabytes. Um, if I take eight off of that, that's about 226. So that gives roughly an eight gig swap partition. So I'm gonna tell um, FDIS that I want a 226, is that right? Four, six, no, 224 um, gigabyte partition by using that, uh, that um, designation there, a plus, which kind of means add a 224 gigabyte partition and if I print that up now you can see it says 224 and now I'm going to create a partition for the swap space and again take the first sector now I'm just going to take the last available sector and you can see it's actually given me 8.8 .8 gigabyte uh, but that's not a problem uh, next thing I need to do is to change the designation of this um, partition I don't know, I've never found out if it's actually absolutely necessary to change this as, par, as far as the operating system is concerned. So what I mean is to say is if I didn't change this designation to Linux swap, would it cause a problem in an operating system if I tell it that that's a swap partition and it looks at it and says no, it says it's a Linux file, Linux file system. Um, it probably wouldn't matter but it certainly matters as far as a human being is concerned because at the moment when I look at that I see it's a small Linux file system not a swap partition so what we'll do is T to change the type of the partition we want to change the type of partition 4 I don't know what number it is so if I do L to list them and you can see all the names here and you can see number 19 is the Linux swap and that's the um, is it UUID I think it is of of that partition type and this this these numbers never ever change that 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 designation there will always mean a Linux swap partition so I'll type in Q to quit that list type in 19 and you can see it tells me that it's changed the designation from Linux file system to Linux swap Peter print just to confirm that and yes that's fine so I'll just write that now um, and that should be done now one other partition I've mentioned on there is this EFI system partition we will be using that um, at the moment it's got the um, firmware for the Apple operating system we will be adding our own bit of firm firmware our own, our own binary to allow us to boot into Linux from scratch so we will be using that partition so there we are we've added um, a new Linux file system partition and a new Linux swap partition so what we need to do now is to prepare those file systems we need to format them so that we can actually write stuff to them at the moment they're just blank well they might not be blank but we don't know what's on there so we need to format them so we know exactly that they're prepared ready to use so to format the file system we use a command called mk uh, sorry 
uh, MKFS, make file system. Put a dot in and then the name of the file system we want to create. So we want to create an ext4 file system, which is the current standard Linux file system. And then we tell it what partition we want to format. Now to be doubly safe, you could type in dev sda3, but it only takes one typo, for example that, and I'll have wiped out the Apple operating system. So what it's best to do is to double click this designation here, and you can see it highlights the whole lot, and then center click the wheel on your mouse, and it will paste what we've just highlighted there automatically. So we know without the risk of any typos and we can see straight away that we've selected the right file, uh, right partition to format and it just helps prevent any accidental errors. Press enter and you can see it started formatting. This won't take long on, on an SSD. If you're on a mechanical drive it might take 30 seconds a minute or so depending on the size of the disk and the speed of it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's quite a quick process. To format the swap partition, it's a different command. We do MK swap, make swap, and again, just highlight the um, device name and center click. So I'm clicking the wheel, just pushing down the wheel on the mouse, and that pastes that what's been highlighted. Press enter and that's a quick operation. It just writes a little signature at the beginning of the partition and that's done. Now you can see it's given me these UUIDs. We will be using them um, to boot. Um, so you could take note of them now, but there is a command called um, ls block and just do slash dev slash sda star and it gives, sorry not ls block, uh, block id, block id and what it does you can see it gives us the information for the partitions that we fed into block id so you can see the um, sda3 the signature the uuid begins 93688 and here you can see sda3 there's the uuid 93688 and so on Likewise, this swap partition's got a signature of 2249D2, and as you can see, 2249D2 is um, down there as well. So, like I say, you can make a note of them, but they're always available to view by running block ID. So, we've created the um, partitions for the disk. Um, we've got the file system to put Linux to scratch on. We've got a swap partition and they've both been ready, uh, formatted and they're ready to use. So all we, we really need to do now is to start with the actual process of going through the Linux from scratch book.